Good evening, folks. Julie here. And it's time for an inspirational video. Um, and maybe mix some child advocacy and stuff in it, too. Or, you know, it might be just some life trials and stuff. It always leads to inspiration. Uh, I'll just call this one Julie's Pondering. How's that sound? Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Julie. And I am a very amateur YouTuber. Don't know much but how to push a record button and make a video. Um, I do... Um, videos on my TV orders when I get them because everybody loves to see what I'm getting. I do Avon videos because I sell Avon so you're going to see a new Avon products um, whenever I have a chance to get them. Um, I'm a child advocate. I'm a guardian of item for the state of Florida so I visit um, children in foster care. There's lots of issues going on. We need to help um, children and by helping them we also need to help their parents um, fight whatever you know a lot of addiction problems and stuff like that, that that break families apart. And we need to, as a community, work to um, help with that situation. Um, I do inspirational videos. A lot of you love that, love when I do an inspirational video. And I'm so thankful that, that y'all are really enjoying those. Um, and of course, my travel videos where, you know, I like to travel. My last one was the end of April, beginning of May, when I was in um, Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. Y'all know my favorite place to go if you've been on my channel for long is the Great Smoky Mountains. A lot of great videos in there. Um, or at least I thought they were great, where, you know, waterfalls and the aquarium and all that kind of stuff. So I hope y'all will check those out. My ones from D.C. I thought were pretty good, especially the Arlington Cemetery ones, where I sat there and videoed the um, when we were riding the trolley and what they were telling us about the history. It was very, very awesome. Um, so lots of great videos, and I hope to have a lot more travel videos. I don't get to travel very much, but I'm going to try to start doing some stuff close to home where I can get out like the day I'm one of the days I'm off right now it's been hard with mom being sick and not being able to drive so when I'm off I have to drive her wherever she needs to go so hopefully you know we'll get through this and um and get to um get to doing some um tra a little more traveling but I don't have that much time off from work to travel so I don't get to do it as much as I'd like to one of these days I'll get to retire but nowhere near that yet so We'll keep on working and hoping that we have some time here and there to go somewhere neat to film for you. Um, so, let's see, inspiration tonight. What's my bit of inspiration for you tonight? You are worthy, and he will never leave you and forsake you. You know, many times we get in this point in our lives where we're, a lot of us were not where we expected to be, you know? And we question why. I question why we lost my daughter. Um, you know, I, it, it makes it hard. And you know, I know what, God lets these things, God, does, God knows it's gonna happen. And, and I know things happen for a reason, or maybe there's no reason. I know the devil's here to still kill and destroy. I know that. And I know that bad things happen to good people. And you just never plan on things to happen. So I'm telling you right now, folks, you never know when your last day is going to be. You never know when your parents' last day are going to be. Last day is going to be. You never know when your child's last day is going to be. We got, we've, we've got numbered days, folks, and we got to start just living like that because I can tell you from working in a restaurant I see people out on a date you know what they're doing not even hardly talking to each other just looking at their phones I think some of them are even texting each other and sitting at the table I think that people have forgotten how to talk to each other it's crazy it really is and hard work where has it gone? People don't want to work anymore. It's crazy. You know, I was watching Dr. Phil. Y'all, if y'all have been on my thing, I've been all about Dr. Phil's Merit, um, Merit Street Media on his Merit Plus app, his new primetime show, um, showing some really good things there. You know, um, what's going on on our border? 
I have, I'm like him, I have no problem with people coming into this country as long as they do it le legally. But when they're coming across that border and just coming across the way they're coming across, that's illegal. That means they're breaking the law. What about all the people who came here and followed the rules, the rules that are set forth to protect our country? Folks, we got people coming over that border from all kinds of places we don't know. But let me tell you, we need immigrants. People aren't working anymore. We're, we're way under the population of what we're supposed to be. People just aren't having as many children anymore. So we're losing our workforce. And one of the shows was talking about how, you know, these kids will pay all this big money to go to college and then end up, it was wasting money. They don't know what they're doing, but we need people to learn the trades. We're running out of carpenters and plumbers and stuff like that. People to fix your house. How long do you have to wait to get something fixed? It's just going to get longer and longer and longer because we don't have anybody that's qualified to do it. We need people to learn those trades, folks. And people just don't want to work. They want to go be the next YouTube influencer or the TikTok queen or king or, you know, or heaven forbid I say something to offend somebody and I get canceled. People are scared to say how they really feel. And we're not, we're too busy to listen to each other. Everybody has to be right. Nobody, nobody wants to believe that they're the ones who's wrong. We have to listen to each other. And the ones of us who are just being quiet, like Dr. Phil says, we have to speak up and say it's not right. You know what? I don't care what you do when you're an adult, but leave the children out of it. That's all I'm going to say about all these, some of these situations. When you're an adult, you have to be 21 to buy, to, to, smoke a cigarette. You have to be 21 to drink alcohol. You have to be 18 to go into military. Why would we let children make life altering decisions when they don't understand what these decisions are going to mean further in their life? It's crazy. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. It's mind boggling. And the horror stories I've watched so many videos of people who regretted their decision and they're just children and they shouldn't have made these decisions in the first place. So, you know, it's horrifying. It, it is horrifying. I, uh, I, I wholeheartedly, when they turn old enough to be cognizant of what they're doing, that's fine. I don't care. That's their walk in life and that's their walk and they're the ones who have to answer to God later on for their, whatever they do in their life. All I can do is pray for them and love them anyways because God don't call me to hate nobody. We're supposed to love everybody, even our enemies. And hopefully we don't have any enemies or many enemies, you know, but we have to, we have to be careful folks. And there's so many issues going on right now. I mean, you can go sit in Miami and see the Russian warships. What are they doing so close to the American mainland? Is anybody else worried about this? Am I the only one who's like, why are the Russian war warships just off of our coast? Why isn't anybody talking about it? Why isn't anybody doing anything about it? The military, the, the Navy's keeping an eye on it. They shouldn't be that close to us. To me, that means we're, and, and look at all the people coming over the border. Do you know they were, they were interviewing, it was on a, 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 I don't know what news, it was on a news channel and they were interviewing these people and everybody thinks these people come coming, China, Lebanon, all these people who's going down the line and asking them where they were from, Venezuela. I mean, we don't know who we're letting in our country. And that's scary. It's scary because there are no terrorists in this country that have come over the border that we don't know where they are, but they're in this country somewhere. And there's definitely millions of people that have come over the border and thousands that we don't know where they are. It's crazy. Why are we letting this happen? And I don't think... You know, I'm really disappointed in both parties, Democrat, Republican, all of it. You know, they're too busy. I'm not going to vote for this because 
this person did it and they're our opposite team. I'm not going to do this. We need to stop acting like children, grade school children. That's what they're acting like in Congress. Grade school children, I'm not going to do that because you're not on my team and I'm not going to vote for anything that you like. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The, the things that are going on in this country right now, I fear for this country. I really fear for it. You know, it, it's, it's really just so many, oh, I just don't even know. I don't even know where to begin. We have to fight for our country, folks. We gotta take our country back. And it starts with your vote. It starts with you just getting out there and, and saying enough is enough. We hire you, we pay you. We pay you to take care of the American people and you ain't taking care of them. You're not. I mean, how much does it cost to fill up your car now? How much does it cost to fill up your, your refrigerator? It's insane. Inflation's through the roof, but oh, they're telling us, oh, the economy's fine. I call bull hockey. I don't think it's fine at all. I think we're really in serious deep trouble, but we keep giving people other countries money that we don't have to give them. Why? There's other countries out there too. Everybody needs to be pitching in, not just us. Sometimes, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't know. And other countries attacking other countries that they have no business attacking. And then expect them not to sit there, you know, not to, not to attack them back and just to sit there and not let nothing happen. And innocent people are getting caught in the middle. Because somebody attacks somebody else and people are fighting back. The other country's fighting back. And innocent people are getting torn apart in the, in the process. And it's sad. It's sad because terrorists are doing this and we're blaming somebody for trying to avenge their people's death. And the, the terrorists are using the other people to try to get sympathy and, and, and start this outrage. And yes, innocent people are dying and it's, it's terrible. But, but put the blame where it really belongs, on the terrorists who are using these people. So, you know, I have friends on both sides of the issue. And it sucks. It really sucks. Because there are innocent people dying on both sides when nobody should be dying at all. Never should have happened to begin with. But it is what it is. All I can do is... <laughs> sit and watch what's going on and pray to God we get some answers and that the country really starts to see what's really going on because let me tell you you see what the government wants you to see you don't see what's really happening I hear different reports from other countries go look at what the other countries are saying because they're saying some way different things than what our country is saying so kind of peek at those and see what's really going on if you Look around and dig a little deeper and you might find it a truer version than what's going on. When I took social psychology, we had a whole section and where even the commercials that you watch try to influence you. It's trying to get you to buy that product. It's what they do with TV. They try to get you to be persuaded one way or another. There's also a thing that was real interesting that we studied about the bystander effect. There's a hundred people out and somebody's getting beaten to a pulp. And you see all these people videoing it and, and, and going crazy. Where's the police? Well, nobody called the police. You know why? Because they're like, all these people are like, oh, there's somebody will have called. But everybody thinks somebody else called and therefore nobody called and nobody helps the person who's getting pulverized. We have to be careful of these things, folks. We have to, to stand up in and, and, and everything. Um, it's, it's just crazy. I'm kind of getting off the inspiration, ain't I? <laughs> so we're going to call this Julie's Pondering instead of inspiration tonight. So, um, but, you know, I always try to throw a little inspiration in there. But um, we really need to work hard and get our country back on track.
I don't know what the right answer is. We're stuck with the same choices we were last time. And you got to choose between the less of two evils. I know which way I'm going. But everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Um, so it is what it is. I hope that everybody studies up. Really study up. Um, and really, it's time to start ho holding people accountable for what's happening in our country. We need to pay, we pay these politicians lots of money and they're all getting rich and we're getting poor and poor. Doesn't matter how hard I work, you can't get ahead. You know, everything keeps going up. So I get a raise, but what does it matter? Everybody wants to get a raise. Everybody wants minimum wage to go up. But what good does it do when they keep rising the, raising the price of everything? You can't make kids understand nowadays. I try to tell these kids I work with, every time you raise the minimum wage, everything else is going to go up. You know, when I started working in 1988, minimum wage was $3.85 an hour. But I could buy a house for like less than 50000 I could buy a car for like $4,000. I could get gas for like 75 cents a gallon. You know, I mean, you could buy a Big Mac for a dollar. Well, I don't know if it was that cheap, but it wasn't, it wasn't real expensive. My numbers may not be accurate, but it was way, way less than what it is nowadays. And um, it's crazy. It's just crazy, and people just don't see it. It's basic math, people. If you, if if you're paying a hamburger um, for a hamburger that's twenty bucks, and, and you want to know why your hamburger's twenty bucks, twenty dollars an hour uh, an hour to to people to flip a hamburger, that's not the way. Minimum wage was meant to be an entry level thing. I have people that come into my work wanting to make the same thing or more than what I'm making. And I've been at my job for 23 years. But they're like, oh, they need to be paid more money. I've worked hard to get to where I am. Why should they come in and get the same thing that I've made after working for 23 years at the same place? You know, it's crazy. And, and people are, let me, let me say one more thing. And then I'm going to get off my soapbox here and, and call it a night. Our children are desensitized. They spend tons of time playing video games with shooting and killing. So when there's a shooting and killing, it doesn't phase them because they see it. They see it on TV, they see it in the movies, they see it on the video games they're playing. They're desensitized, so it's not as stressful. I mean, I'm sure it's stressful. It's, they see it already all the time and what they're doing. So it's just desensitized. It doesn't mean nothing to them. It doesn't mean anything to all. So keep that in mind, folks, when you're letting your children, what you're letting your children watch, what you're letting them play, what you're letting them do. You, you gotta keep an eye on that, what they're listening to, who they're hanging out with. Let me tell you something, folks. Human trafficking is real. I, I have taken many classes on it being I have to stay up to date on these things and you know how they're targeting your children nowadays their cell phone their iPad we just had a case I just saw a thing on on TV about a sextortion case with a 13 year old boy he committed suicide because he's being extorted that's what they're doing they're having them share they'll get on these social media apps they'll play video games with them or they'll get on snapchat or one of the other apps or video games or whatever and they start talking to them and they befriend them the kids don't know that who they're talking to is it really another 13 year old so then they tell them to share pictures and stuff like that well then they exhort the uh, extort them. you don't send me no more pictures i'm going to tell your mom you don't do this and i'm going to do this and they're threatened and then that happens a child kills their life. Or this is how they get girls into trafficking. Even boys, the, tra the number for, of trafficking for males is going up too. So please, please watch what your children are doing if they're on an app. 
please, you've got to pay attention, folks, because they're, they're, every time I turn around, I see a picture of a child that's missing, teen that's missing. I think last week alone, I saw three or four pictures in my community, children that are missing. Some of them are found, some of them are not found. And it makes you wonder. Some of these kids, I, I, I watched um, a documentary on, I, I watched it in the movie theaters. They did it for um, for child advocates and stuff like that, but it's on a, um, Amazon and it's called Blind Eyes Open. And it was a real eye-opening. People are being trafficked out by their own families, some of them. And it's not exactly, you know, when we saw Sound of Freedom, and if you haven't seen it, it's an excellent movie, and there was a lot of hype over it, but it, because it, to get people to watch something, they have to sensationalize it a little bit to make it, people want to see it. But it was eye-opening in that it was based on a true story. What happened, you know, is true. Um, the parts that weren't true, they told told you it wasn't. This is the end that we added was this because this is what we, you know, this. But it happens a little bit differently here. And there was a lot of flack from some people about, oh, that's not how it happened. And, and, and it's true. You, generally, that's not the way it happens in America. The way it happens in America is so much now is so much more online. And um, But the, the Blind Eyes Open was talking about how they recruited people right in the school lunchroom. What they do is they, they bring these kids in and then they get this one kid, they got them in the trafficking and then the trafficking, um, they'll go in the schools and, and, and get other people. And, and that's the way they, that's the way they do it now, you know, you know, on the internet and in the schools and everything. And one of the seminars that I went to about trafficking would show you pictures and say, which one do you think is the trafficker? And people that you never thought would be traffickers. It's just eye-opening, folks. We have to really start helping and watching our children, folks. Our children are being damaged because we're living in a social media world. I like YouTube. I like posting videos. I like things like that. I try to make stuff that will not hurt anybody. You know, I don't, you know, but there are people out there that will. They will take advantage. They'll get on Snapchat, TikTok, all this kind of stuff. And there are people that are, there was one that, there was a video on the TikTok the other day of somebody saying not to listen to your parents. How to do the, how to do something. I mean, outright telling them to defy their parents, not to do, it's just, I'm like going, I'm sitting here going, are you kidding me? How can this person still be online? But see, they let anybody post. Anybody post what they want. And this is where children get. Look at all these TikTok challenges and stuff like that. Tide Pods. Children eating Tide Pods. Children beating the crap out of each other because it's a challenge that they saw on social media. We have to pay attention, folks, because people are getting hurt from this stuff. Have I ranted enough for you tonight? I'm sorry. I went off the chain, but when I start talking about stuff and I see what shape our country is in and I just want it to get better and, and it's not going to get better if we don't work on it. So that's it for tonight. Um, remember, and I always remember when I'm having a bad day, when things are getting tough and even when I see all this crazy stuff like this is that is happening. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He is here with me all the time. He's going to get me through. And I'm going to keep going. And he's going to get me through. He walks with me all the time. Even in the tough times, I know he's there. Because he's been the one consistent thing in my life. He's always there. Even in my darkest hours, he's always there. And sometimes it's hard to see it when you're when you're going through it and you you want to know why and you don't understand but things happen and and it's life and we have to move on we have to stay strong and you know the one thing I know that if I leave this earth tomorrow I'm going to be with Jesus and that gives me a little less I mean, we're humans ever going to get anxious 
and we're going to get worried about things, but we're not supposed to worry. The Bible tells us, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And it's so easy to fall back on the, on the fear. So, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is let's, let's do this life folks. Let's do it all work together. Let's stop beating each other up and let's just find peace and try to make our country a better place to live in. And the way we're gonna do that is by speaking up, voting, and holding people accountable. And we're letting the, the, the little minority, the little f this much, speak for this much, because this much is afraid to say anything because they're afraid they're gonna, something's gonna be totally taken out of context. And that's sad, that's sad because everybody has feelings, not just one person. And no person's feelings is any better than anybody else's. So you may be coming at a person, you may not agree with them and it's not fair to overlook their feelings too because they have feelings too. And yeah, I'll probably get bashed for that, but it is what it is. Um, I'm not going to sit here and be afraid to say, hey, let's do what's right, folks. Let's stop letting the few speak for the many. We have to get our country back. We have to. We have to trust God to do it. And you know what? If you don't believe in God, that's fine. I'm not going to force you to believe in God. That's the way I believe. And I pray that one day you'll see see it the way I see it. But if you don't, that's between you and God. And I still love you. So, you know, because that's what I'm supposed to do. There's no room in this world for hate. So I'm going to leave you with that tonight, folks. Sorry, it was more of a rant than inspiration. I thank you all for the time you give me and watching the videos. And I hope you have a blessed night. And I'll see you real soon because I have lots more Timu coming. Y'all have a blessed night. See you in the next video. Bye.